Hi, my name is Caspin. This is a new little Eurorack pallet case I'm building. It's the IntelliGel, I believe, 62 HP case. Uh, I'm trying to have this case be focused on generative ambient music with uh, Monomay teletype in one side and with uh, Make Noise Mimeophone in the other side. Not quite sure what the modules in the middle are going to be yet, but right now I have the Make Noise Telematic in there. And so far it's working out well, but I would like something where I can have two separate voices. So probably fiddle some more with that and see where it takes me. Uh, this little video is actually my first patch ever with the Monomay teletype. And let's jump straight into just listening to it for a while. And then afterwards I'll walk you through exactly what the patch does. As mentioned, this is my very first patch on the Monomay Teletype. I'm absolutely in love with it. It is so much fun to play with and it's so fast and easy to be creative with. Um, I'm going to do a walkthrough of my code here, but don't take this as best practices for how to write code on the Teletype because this is my very, very first patch on it. So I'm sure I'm getting lots of things wrong. I'm sure I'm doing horrible practices and a lot of things could be done way better, but I wanted to walk you through it anyways. The idea behind this patch is that on one side uh, I have a pattern where I can fill in new notes from a MIDI controller that I've connected to trigger one and to the in of the teletype. And so every time I tap on the keyboard, it'll add these notes to pattern one. And we can go look at what that script looks like. This is the script that's triggered from trigger one. So every time I press a key, we're grabbing that voltage from in and we are throwing it into pattern zero. The reason we have this little delay operand here is that the teletype doesn't get the values from in instantly. It's running in a little loop. I think I read online that it's like every 62 milliseconds something like that. Which means that when I press my key, if I read it immediately at that point, I would probably get the last value that it had read. And so by having this little delay, it lets me just wait that tiny little gap and then get the current value uh, and throw it onto the pattern. Let's go look at the script that's been run by the metronome. The main thing that this script does is it runs through pattern one and it grabs the next tone from it and it plays that on trigger A and sets the value on CPA. Uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. And then we have these two other commands down here one that runs every 8 and one that runs every 12 steps. Um, let's go look at those separately, but one of them changes our pattern and the other uh, adds some little accent tones that come in kind of syncopated. You can kind of hear them in the background here. All right. This is a script that maintains our patterns. And what it essentially does is it looks at whether or not there are any new values in pattern zero. And new values, as we saw earlier, gets added there whenever I press anything on the MIDI keyboard. 
And if there are new values there, it pops it off and then it pushes it on to pattern one. So it basically means it grabs whatever is at the end of pattern zero and it puts it at the end of pattern one. And then it does one last check, which is to see do we have more than five uh, values in pattern one? If we do, it removes the first one. So ideally, I might want to tweak this a little bit later. Um, right now, notes, as you can imagine from this, are not being added in the same order that you entered them in, because uh, I'm pushing and popping, which means that it's, uh, it's like a stack. Uh, I'll look at this later. I might look at using the queue uh, mechanism in the teletype instead of a pattern. But for now, this kind of works, and it kind of lets me do what I wanted to do with this pattern. every 12 steps and it adds little accent notes and it adds them kind of on a syncopated rhythm um, so the way you can look at it is that at first it picks a random value between 0 and 3 and then based on that it decides what to do with the, the value that it's picking out of the pattern so we do pattern the next which has two functions first it gives us a note to use uh, but also you know, we have that loop that runs in five step constantly. By having this thing pick out a value every 12 steps, we're actually making that loop uh, change a lot because it's gonna go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, until we pick one out here, that's gonna advance at one. And so it's suddenly gonna be 0, 1, and then maybe 3, 4, 0. Uh, and so it just makes it a lot more dynamic and it makes it constantly changing just a little bit more than it would without this. Uh, once we have this value, we then use the random value to choose one of three different ways to alter the tone. Uh, we can either lower it an octave, we can raise it an octave, or I've added this that lowers it uh, two tones, uh, two full tones, I believe. Um, and then we play it, uh, and we play it with a little delay, and the reason for this is we can't play on top of the other notes because the synth module, the telemonic, will only do one tone at a time. Actually, it does three, but that's kind of a, a different tale. I can only send it one note value at a time. And so uh, by sending it out just a little bit later, I avoid having any problems with that. But I also create this interesting kind of syncopated rhythm that you can kind of hear in the background that these accent notes are coming. Uh, slightly different out than the rest at a slightly different rhythm. Might be a little hard to pick out exactly what they are because I have everything running through the Mimeo phone, which is adding a weird delay at a different um, time than the rest, which also makes the whole thing feel a little more organic and moving and changing. Um, but that's essentially what this is doing. The idea behind this patch is to have something that works sort of like a little sequencer on a patch data that constantly runs through a little loop of notes. Um, and then whenever I want to change that, instead of having it change everything at once, I can add a set of notes that I want it to change by. And a little or a little or time, it'll take one of those and it'll replace one of the existing notes in the sequence. And this means that it's kind of a uh, slowly changing from one state to another. You can almost think of it as you're kind of modulating from one key to another. If you were to first have a set of notes in one key, and then maybe you change to add a lot of notes that were in both keys, and then finally you added notes that were only in the second key. And then this way of doing it, the, the little script here on the teletype would automatically modulate from one key to the next. Uh, in the little uh, sample you can hear in the background here, I'm just having it play um, from the first, third, and fifth, and then switch over to the second, fourth, and sixth. And it kind of does a little bit of the same modulation, but not, not quite as intentional and extreme. Uh, but 
maybe that's the limits of my <laughs> in the moment uh, music theory capabilities. Hope you enjoyed this, both watching this little walkthrough and listening to it. Please click uh, follow and subscribe, and also check me out on Instagram and on Twitter. I'll put some uh, uh, put some links right after this. Thanks for watching.